Hi everyone, we're here with Sophie Twig and we are here for another episode of Behind the Lines. This week we're going to do some longbow stuff. So Sophie, you've been shooting longbow for 22 years. Do you want mm-hmm. to tell us a bit of what you've achieved during that time? So, well, I started off at the age of 11. So I've kind of, I've been really lucky. I've kind of worked my way at the ranks. So as a junior, I shot for the county team and I shot like um, national records, regional county records, which is really cool. And now I've obviously progressed um, into the adults, which is really nice. So obviously my husband and I compete quite a lot. We travel the country competing like most weekends when COVID's not kicking off. <laughs> it's really nice now as well, because I actually look after all the, the juniors in Devon and Cornwall as well. So I'm passing on my, my knowledge, my experience and things that I've learned as obviously working my way up from junior to adult as well. So that's that's really cool. It's really nice doing that. Okay, so um, you asked me to put together some bits about um, how I think how far Longbow's come on in recent years. So I really do think it's it's come on leaps and bounds. I mean, um, since I've been doing, well, since I've been competing properly in the last five years, it's certainly come on leaps and bounds. I mean, even things like um, when you go to um, competitions, we're now doing head-to-heads, so Longbow's are doing head-to-heads. One of the biggest things that I found when we first started doing sort of head-to-heads um, sort of about five years ago was the fact that me as a, a longbow archer use a ground marker. I never used to get time to put my ground marker down and it used to be a right old, right old palaver. And judges are slowly starting to sort of wake up to this as well. So we're now getting in times to set yourself in and get ready, which is really cool. Um, the biggest thing for me has been our own ranking system. So it's been really nice that we've got our own um, ranking system in place now. So it's really great to see how you compare to others within the country. And there's been a massive uptake as well. So we've had more and more sort of um, people taking part in that as well. So it's really nice, really nice to see that as well. And obviously they've been um, introducing awards as well. So um, I was really lucky I came out second in the country um, last year. So I got a really cool, nice engraved trophy, which was really nice. And I'm, I'm lucky that I've had it for the last three years that I've kept, I've got to keep as well. So that's really cool. Um, also the fact that when we go to competitions, we're now getting our own trophies and medals awarded. Whereas before, um, we never used to sort of be that recognised. We never used to sort of have trophies or medals. So that's been a really, um, really cool thing as well. Obviously, um, developments in bows as well. So um, there's been sort of use of exotic woods. So the bows are just getting faster, better performance as well, which is, has really helped. The scores are going up as well. So there's been some massive scores in, in recent years put in by longbow archers, really starting to sort of... Um, chase uh bare bow archers as well which has been which has been really good um national recognition as well so we're now getting recognized at com- a national competition so the likes of um sort of national counties gnam um british target champs as well which is cool and there's been some sort of epics of head-to-heads as well so we quite find often find as longbow archers you're mixed in with the bow style sometimes the head-to-heads and there's been some awesome matches over the years where longbow archers have taken sets of free curve archers. So that's that's quite cool. Um, the biggest thing for me is these scores are going up and up and up. And we're going to get to a point where there's going to be longbow archers hitting their like thousand marks on the 1440. And I think that's going to be the next sort of big step as well. And I think longbow archers are embracing sort of um, more sort of archery GB competitions and taking it seriously. There's a lot more like competitive longbow archers out there now, out there now that are not just sort of shooting at clubs, but really taking it seriously, which is which is a massive thing as well. What would you say to because obviously with the women's side of longbow, there's not as many as what no. would hope. How would you encourage women to join longbow? Just, um, I mean, for me, it was all about finding somebody that you can you can talk to, finding somebody that who shoots the bow you can learn thing, learn things from as well, and just finding somebody to practice with. That's that's the basic part: practicing, going to the club, and and, and getting sort of involved in that sense. Just at the basic level, really will sort of get you into it and, and get you going as well. Cool. So, right, hints and tips to become a successful on branches. So, these are just. Um, obviously, I explained to you that my husband and I both shoot longbow, so my husband's very lucky. He's number three in the country as well, so that's really cool. So these are just some of the tips that we think are, are some of the most important things to, to think about when you shoot longbow. So a match set of arrows, basics, basics, within a few grains. Everybody, I know it's cliche, everyone thinks, oh, yeah, it's just a wooden arrow. It's not just a wooden arrow. There's lots more things to it and things like that. I mean, my my arrows that I use for competition um, 12 of them cost me 120 quid. They're made specifically for me. They're made for my bow and I look after them. That's basics, basics, basics. Um, knocking point, um, 
this might be a bit of a controversial one, but it's my opinion. I don't like the metal knocking points. For me, they rip the heck out my tab and they slow my bow down as well. So having a good old um, sort of um, dental floss necking, knocking point or anything outside that really helps. Arrow maintenance, so like we said, um, on the right hand side, you will see an ACE arrow straightener. So this is a really good um, device for straightening arrows. Okay, so my husband's getting really good at doing it now. We have a big um, slab of granite. And my husband rolls the arrows on and, and straightens the arrows on. And that's that's basics, but it, my gosh, does it work? I can always tell personally when an arrow's gone off. I can almost look down, look down at it and I know it's bent. So keeping those arrows straight and, and keeping on top of it works well. Waxing your string as well, that's a basics, not having all those horrible hairs. Um, for me as well, one of the biggest things that um, we always find is when you practice, people never like practicing in uh, in wet or wind or anything else like that. It seems it gets wet or windy when you're practicing. Everybody goes and runs and hides. For me, one of the biggest things is I've got used to shooting in wind. I've got used to shooting in rain. So I know what my bow is going to do. I know how my arrows react. I mean, for us, I mean, to masters, for example, in that wet, when the arrows were, um, the fletchings were decreasing in size, I know how much I needed to um, aim off to deal with that. And for me, that's a really important factor. Not many people think about that. They're quite happy shooting the club and sun and nice weather, but you need to get used to shooting in these bad weather conditions to know what it's like and know how your bow's going to react as well. Understanding your sighting aid. So with longbow, there's two main sighting aids. There's either band or ground marker. So for me personally, I like the ground marker. I can't, my brain doesn't work with a band. So it's it's getting to know that ground marker, getting to know your sight marks, getting know, to know how to adjust it as well is crucial. And that's one of the things that why I've got so, so good with my ground marker, I know it really well. I know how to make those small movements when your arrows are going, say instead of going gold high, going in the black, how far to move it. Um, keeping a note of all your sight marks. Now I have a black book, so every time I go to a different site, every time I go to a different ground, I make a note of where my ground marker was, I make a note of what bow I was using, what arrows I was using, and what the weather conditions were. So every time I go back to that ground, I have a basic sight mark, so I have something to work, for, work from. And for me, that's worked wonders. Also knowing your bow and its talk and how it reacts, that, that's really, really important. Getting to know your bow, shooting, those, shooting enough arrows off it so you know how it reacts. You know how it reacts in the sun, you know how it reacts in the, in the rain is, is absolutely crucial. Um, the other one, um, a bit about um, technique as well. I'll go into a bit more detail a bit later on as well. Attending competitions, basic. So going to different fields, getting used to shooting on different fields. We all know it. it's like it's all well and good shooting at your own club. You know that field well, you know it really well, but you need to get used to shooting on different grounds and shooting on different grounds, getting used to when there's a field that's got a bit of a hump and you've got to aim slightly higher and, and things like that as well. Um, speak to other archers. Don't be afraid um, to ask for advice. One thing I always say is long bar archers are always really good at offering advice, but you don't have to take everything on board. I mean, what works for me might not work for you. And it's just it's just going out there, sharing ideas and then speaking to people. That's crucial. And also finding someone to practice with. One of the biggest things and one of the biggest reasons why I've got to the level that I'm at is because of my husband. I mean, when we first met, we were not bad archers, but since we've been together, we've pushed each other and we've pushed each other and we've pushed each other. And for me, that's what why I've got to the level that I'm at, because we've just been practicing, we've been going up the club together and practicing, and we've been pushing and kick, kicking each other. And for me, that's that's another sort of major factor as to why I've got to the level that I'm at as well. So you've said that obviously don't be afraid to take advice, but also be careful of the advice. Yeah. What What do you think is the best bit of advice you've been given? Oh gosh, um, bow hand I think is probably so. Um, for me, there's different ways to grip a bow. I mean, my husband when he shoots his long bow, he's quite a relaxed grip. For me, because I've got I've got smaller hands, I have to hang on to it. So I have to push and I have to hang on to the bow, and that stops that bow hand kicking. So for me, the biggest thing is, is pushing that bow hand because as a long bow archer, that's one of the biggest things that send your arrows off left, right and centre is, is not having that push on that bow hand. That's that's for me personally anyway. All right, cool. Right. OK, so how to pick your first long bow. OK, so um, I'm in a very fortunate position that um, my husband and I are sponsored by Wales Archery so we we're very lucky that we have a lot of help and support in in sourcing our bows but for somebody who's going out there to pick up to buy a long bow for the first time there's just a few basic hints and tips that you really should consider 
So make sure you get your draw length and your arrow check. So make sure you know your draw length because with a long bow, it's really crucial that you're not overdrawing the long bow. If you're overdrawing the long bow, you'll end up like I did when I was a kid and you'll end up breaking a long bow. I've got a massive scar on my eye from when I was a kid growing up. Um, go to reputable supply. I mean, Wales, I mean, Wales archery is one of the best places I've ever been to to buy a long bow. They will measure you up, they will help, um, and they will supply you with a, a good bow. And make sure that the bow is going to be suitable for you. Make sure that it's going to be the right um, draw length as well. Um, speak to other longbow archers. I mean, I know when I first sort of got back into archery, one of the biggest things I used to do is I used to go and have a nose along the line and, and see what other longbows are shooting, what other longbow archers are shooting. Then you get to know that the, the decent sort of makes out there as well. Um, ask to try a club longbow as well. So we're very fortunate on my club. We have got club longbows available. So we can actually get sort of newbies to go out and actually try them as well, which is good. Um, consider your height, okay? So um, there's an optimum height for um for um long bows as well so um oh, i always say this word wrong so making sure you're putting your thumb on your head and that gets you the correct the correct height for a long bow as well um for your first long bow as well it doesn't necessarily have to be a fast bow you can start off at sort of shorter distances but it's just getting used to the feel long bows are a completely different beasts for most other bows and the whole kick in the arm really sort of freaks people out to begin with so you start off with perhaps a slower bow and just get used to it and then build it as we said, go to a decent supplier. Um, one of the, the things that they always say when you're buying um, a long bow is, is talking about optimum comfortable draw weight. So for a woman, it's around about 30 to 40 pounds um, and around about 35 to 50 for gents. Oh. <laughs> Quite a lot more than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Okay, so. So key areas to focus on for beginners so um there's some basic basic mistakes that um sort of long bar arch like archers make the first time they pick up a longbow and it always it still always makes me giggle when you get a recurve archer with a longbow in their hand for the first time and they forget to grip the bow and it goes flying out their hand <laughs> <laughs> many a time have i seen it <laughs> so um so one of the things like i said before for me is your bow hand so make sure your bow has a, uh, your longbow has a decent grip on it uh, and make sure it's strong and doesn't move when you lose the arrow. One also thing to consider with your um, with your grip as well is, do you see the picture in the right hand corner? So it's a, it's a little bit small. There's something on a long bow called an arrow brush. So there's a little bit where your arrow is supposed to sit on your hand. So it's also making sure that your arrow is going to go past that arrow brush so it doesn't damage um, damage the long bow. Obviously, as normal, one, ba one basic anchor point. So same with the recurve, same with whatever base style, having that solid anchor point. So um, all the good um, long bar archers out there have shot recurve and shot recurve fairly well. So it's that same thing under your chin, nice, nice, solid anchor point. Um, with the long bow as well, it's it's coming through that shot properly. So so make sure you're going through that shot, never overdrawing a long bow either. Um, making sure you're not varying that, that draw length because with a long bow, it has a, a massive effect um on the flight of the arrow um don't be afraid to try different like pile weights fletchings profiles and things like that there's lots of guys that make um really good arrows out there that will be able to help and support you with that as well um as we said you don't need a bow with the highest draw weight possible you'll find a lot of the sort of um top longbow guys out there and girls don't shoot that higher poundage bow but it's just finding something that you're comfortable with as well cool okay Okay, so key areas to focus on for beginners. So basic, basic, so many, I find so many people make this mistake. So storing your bow correctly with a long bow. So when it's, when you've been to a work competition, not just putting it straight back in your bow bag, leaving it, out, leaving it out to dry out as well, because the water, especially when you've got like a leather grip around your long bow, the water can get under your grip and it starts lifting the glue. Um, don't store it in the sun and don't store it upright either. So make sure it's always flat and in the cool. Um, in Invest in a, in a good bay bag as well. So it is a long stick, but you don't want to bash it or break it. Um, don't leave a long bow strung when it's not in use. Try and put your bow on a spike, so on an upright spike, rather than sort of laying it down. The amount of times I've seen people tread on the ends of long bows and it's horrendous. So I always have a nice spike in the ground, keeps it nice and upright and then stops people treading on it. Um, one of the things that I do when I string my bow is I always check it. So 
always just do a quick visual check just to make sure it's all good and it's all in working order as well. Um, when it rains, don't leave it out in the rain. So keep it in a tent. So top tip, I bet you didn't know this one, Soph. Quetchers actually have a designed hook for a longbow. So when you look on the outside of a quetcher, it's got a little hook. So it's really good for hanging your longbow on as well. Designed <laughs> <laughs> just for longbow. <laughs> um, so um, as I said, for me, if you're using a ground marker or if you're using a band, make sure you're measuring your ground marker. I mean, when I first started cheating longbow, I used to get laughed at when I used to trot along with my little tape measure to measure out my ground marker. And now people are gradually realising why I've been doing that. And it's the same with either a ground marker or a band. Make sure you measure and you know where your sight marks are. So for those guys using bands, you see the picture in the bottom um, right hand corner, having a bow scale on the front of your long bow. So um, my husband just puts a bit of tape on there and he marks off. So he knows all his distances and he knows where that band's got to go. Um, when I use my ground marker as well, one other basic tip is I put foot markers down. So I make sure that I'm always standing in the same place. Otherwise, with the ground marker, and same with the band, you can really vary where your feet are going as well. Um, another one, don't let your string slip in your bag. Okay, so many people just bung the longbow away. Don't worry about keeping their string nice and tight. A hair tie works wonders. So top left-hand corner there, look, just a basic hair tie just to keep that string. And it stops all those twists coming out of your, your longbow. And obviously, you need to make sure you're keeping the bracing height to the, the, the set amount. With a long bow, it's it's so important to get that bracing height right, otherwise you just lose all the cast out of your out of your um, arrow. I automatically know when my bracing height's not right on my bow because my bow doesn't react the same way. Um, make sure you have your essentials. So when people first pick up a long bow, they quite often just wear a nice little plastic recurve bracer and don't realise that with a long bow it will kick you and it will catch you because of the bracing height. So having a nice thick um, leather bracer to protect you is, is also key. There's a few long bows out, long bow archers out there that just wear little plastic braces and I don't know how they do it. They've obviously not had a big kick in the arm before. Um, the other thing um, that's crucial as well is using a puller when pulling your arrows. Basic basics comes back to the fact that we want to keep those arrows nice and straight and it's so easy to um, to bend your arrows when you're uh, when you're pulling them out, especially when it's like a master's day when it's chucking it down the rain. Yep. <laughs> There we go, sorted. <laughs> cool, brilliant. That's the end. Sorry, you said with the longbow, you obviously have the the leather around for the grip. How often mm -hmm. do you have to replace that on average? I haven't. I've never had to replace a grip. Touch wood. Okay. But I've, I've looked after my bow, so I've always made sure that after it's been out in a wet day or anything else like that, it comes out my bag. It's dried out. It's laid to dry out. You just you do have to look after it. I've put the odd bit of wax on it and a leather polish as well on it, but I've never had. To replace a grip on a long bow touch word which is good okay so hopefully everyone has learned some key information about longbow and if anyone wants to give it a go give sophie a little shout <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if anybody ever wants to to have a go at longbow i'm quite happy to, to help and support feel free to drop me a message on facebook or whatever because um we're quite happy to help and, and support with coaching and top tips as well i think you'll find longbow longbow archers are quite a helpful bunch and there's always lots of people out there to give you help and support but if anybody is interested and does want help, please don't be afraid to, to scream and shout. I'm here to help. 